Hi everyone, um, I'm back. I'm just going to talk about where I left yesterday. Uh, I was talking about how I just got on with normal life, you know, after recording Trees of Leaves and never really gave it much thought. Um, it wasn't until 2011. Uh, one night, uh, I don't think I could sleep, it was very hot. I decided to, uh, you know, look on the internet. I was quite getting into YouTube at the time. Um, it started to get more popular. And I just had this, um, oh, let's just see if there's anything about Bizarre Unit. Expecting something to come up. No sort of um, search found and, uh, you know, I sort of, oh, okay, let's just uh, forget it now. <laughs> But what happened was, to my surprise, there was lots of, uh, you know, stuff. People were uh, playing the record, uh, away from the screaming car, dancing, and uh, they'd put some videos of my tracks also. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. Absolutely shocked. I thought, what's going on? Is this some kind of joke? And so I started making contact with these people. There were some DJs in Barcelona and uh, they were ecstatic about me and making contact with me. And I just couldn't, I just didn't get it, to be honest. And one guy said, have you got any records, Paul? And realising I'd got quite a few in the garage. And I said, yeah, why? He said, uh, would you send me one? Yeah, why not, you know. He says, because we, you know, we can't find them anywhere. And uh, so I sent him uh, Cheese Valleys and uh, a couple of singles. And then a couple of days later, I got, because I was starting to contact a lot of people. And this guy said, uh, Paul, you do realise that your album is worth a lot of money? And I said, what do you mean, worth a lot of money? It didn't make any sense. He said, how much do you think it's worth? I said, oh, I don't know, 10 pound or something, uh, maximum. He said, no, your album is selling for three and 400 euros each. And I went, what? <laughs> I thought, is this some kind of wind up? And uh, he said, put one, on you, uh, put one on eBay and see what happens. And I said, what, do I put it up for 300 euros? He said, yeah, put it up for 400 euros. So, so I did that. And I literally just put it up and thought, oh, this is going to be a really embarrassing. You know, nobody's going to be interested in this. It's stupid, but let's just go along with it. And within 10 minutes, it had sold. And I put it up for 400 euros. And it was just mad. I just, I was literally shaking. I just, uh, I just couldn't believe it. And this guy uh, um, texted me and said uh, something about, you know, be careful with the packaging, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so this went on for weeks. I was putting them on eBay and they were zooming out at 300, 400 euros each and uh, my bank balance was obviously going up great and, uh, and but I couldn't get them out quick enough and I'd got, I'd, I'd, I'd say about 50 left or something like that. And I'd got, oh, and they wanted the, the 12 inch uh, fantasy and feeling which I'd got about the same. I'd got quite a few singles. So it's just like, I don't know. It was just uh, surreal. So, then I got people interested in wanting to reissue everything, which I'd got all the, the rights to anyone, I had, uh, all the rights to all my songs. I'd never signed my uh, sort of uh, publishing rights away or anything like that, copyrights and things. So, And then Frank Meyer at a video on demand um, got in contact with me and there was a Veronica from um, Minimal Wave and they were both interested in reissuing all my stuff. And then <clears throat> Frank wanted to 
have anything else that I got, like demos and stuff like that. And I thought, mm, what sort of stuff? Oh, it's not very good, to be honest. And I, could, I was absolutely amazed that he wanted all the, the sort of demos and uh, rough uh, takes and, and uh, he's absolutely um, really happy about having all those. So we did a double album with the, the reissue of Trees Without Leaves and then we had all the, the old tapes. I had a few tapes. Mark had a couple of tapes as well of Bizarre Unit stuff. Uh, and this tape had been in the garage on the top shelf with all the oil cans and everything else. And he just used to slap it on an old cassette every time he would do sort of uh, messes with cars and things. And uh, I think it was found in an old tin, um, a lot of the stuff. And uh, I went down London and had it all transferred digitally and uh, a place... Uh, this, this renowned for doing it, and um, I sent all the things off to Frank, and uh, we did the uh, a strange functional system box set from all that. Really, obviously, we had the I had some acetates as well, and some um, you know the singles and some other bits and pieces. So it was quite a nice ending to his. And I must stress that I didn't actually think that the music would be have such a legacy or an endurance uh, through the decades. I never thought that. I just thought it was finished with. And uh, I'm so glad that you all enjoy it. And uh, it, it's and, and I'll talk about uh, why I made other albums recently, but. Uh, I just want to say a personal thank you to um, Keep Playing the Music and uh, I love telling this story and if any new musicians are out there just just keep doing it and uh, do it for yourself first of all uh, find your own sort of style and uh, be committed to it and uh, please don't try to change for anyone do it as you, you know, instinctively, how you feel it should be done. Okay, guys, I'll catch up with you another time and uh, keep playing the music. I'll speak to you again soon.